In the headlines, Peshler Disaster Management Committee concerned the village is not adequately prepared for the 2020 hurricane season. 1st January 2021, the target date to implement new management structure at the Dominica China Friendship Hospital, and an appeal to law abiding Haitians to help the police stop human trafficking. I am Andrea Louis with the Channel 5 News, back with the details after this. to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. Thank you for staying with us. First up, serious concerns among Pishler's Disaster Management Committee for the 2020 hurricane season. Julian Morris explains. Pishler had been declared a special disaster zone since the passage of Tropical Storm Erica in 2015. The community sits between two rivers, which makes it extremely prone to effects of flooding and landslides. Chairperson of the Pishler Disaster Management Committee, Paula Lopin, says she is very concerned about Pichler's state of readiness for the 2020 hurricane season. But Pichler is in, in trouble. We have not seen much happening. Of course, many, many people or some people were given houses, but there are many people who are vulnerable. And Maranatha Square is below the level. So if the river comes down, it, can, it may or it can't. It has the ability to just wash them away. And we are worried about the people of Maranatha because there are some people who are, they are living right by the Riverside. We were hoping that they would also build us river walls or give us game and baskets because they cannot take off everybody from Pishle. The chairman commended committee members who are dedicated to the task at hand. She points out though that there is apprehension over the bypass built in response to the bridge damaged by Hurricane Maria. There is that bridge in Pishle that has, it is built too low and although we begged the people do not, please do not build a bridge that low. But they say they, they, they know and they are engineers. But the history of fishing should have shown that the river is dangerous. Especially when they have that new settlement there where they cut so many trees everywhere. And so um, we were devastated by that bridge because what the bridge did, it, instead of the river, as soon as it started raining and it brought a little debris, it blocked. And just, it just made another road and it went right through the village. According to Lopez, the Member of Parliament for the Petit Savan constituency has regular and open communication with Pichler's Disaster Management Committee. It has been suggested that work be done on the community's back road, which was used after Tropical Storm Erica, as a means of exiting Pichler. There is that road at the back of Pichler. Well, we spoke to the power rep and he said he's going to look into it a little further. We have been crying for help that they clear because that is the escape route. If our main road is blocked, because during um, after Erica, everybody will pass through the Pichle and enter at the back of Pichle to Bellevue Chope. Since Erica, it is blocked, and we have begged and begged and begged, and nothing has happened. Due to damage to the community's emergency shelters, Pichle residents have been assigned to the Pierre Charles Secondary School. 
In more top stories, a challenge to local media to change the narrative and develop a more positive image of Dominica. This from Minister for Tourism, Denise Charles, who believes more emphasis should be placed on highlighting positive aspects of Dominica and its people. We have so many young people creating new products and performing well at universities. Why don't these incredible stories make the news? It's time we let ideas contend. Let Dominica make breaking news for the nation with the fastest growing small businesses, the most innovative students, and the most environmentally responsible country in the Lesser Antilles. Let us make news for being the tourism destination of choice for many visitors. I challenge the media houses to join me on my chronicles to rediscover this beautiful, uniquely natural gem. Minister Charles believes opening the floor for a wider range of discussions can lead to economic prosperity for the country. All I ask of us as a people is to look at the glass in front of us, half full, and let us work together to bring it to the brim. Gossiping, innuendos, false accusations, and hate cannot grow an economy. It is discussions that can lead to further economic prosperity. We are, as a nation, are blessed with brilliant minds. Let's use these minds to grow our economy. On to health matters. The National Health Commission is looking forward to putting in place a new management structure at the Dominica China Friendship Hospital by 1st January 2021. Former President of Dominica, His Excellency Eliud Williams, who is on the commission, says the proposal is subject to cabinet approval. But when that happens, there will still be a lot of work to do. HR for the first time will we, we'll find that they need to ensure they know what is the capacity of the staff. We'll start that work, but we'll not necessarily continue. Um, <coughs> engineering, um, we're going to have significant bu new buildings, 11 buildings, 9 to 11 buildings. I'm not sure at this point which is just because some of them go together. Equipment. And then importantly, if we are buying equipment from GE or from Toshiba or whoever, what arrangements do we have in place? What say do we have in the contract? And so for the first time as well, we're proposing we will have a legal person on staff who can mm -hmm. read the fine prints so that you are not just sending us a contract. Because, because one of the challenges we have with regards to all of this equipment is that we purchase this equipment very expensive and then we enter into some kind of maintenance agreement with these supplies and so if something goes bad or something becomes dysfunctional with this system with this um, equipment we have to wait for them yeah. to send somebody from the united states uh, in most cases uh to come in and now with covid right we have a problem Legislation to facilitate a new management structure at the hospital is expected to go before Parliament in September. It is important that we have the new legislation in place because currently there is no provision for recruiting a CEO yeah. at the hospital. The, the tripartite, the triumvirate arrangement which exists there we know is not functional and it has to change. But to bring in the CEO, the CEO has to have specific functions and this must be within. And that's what you said to us, in fact, um, it started with you on March 2nd, 2018, mm -hmm. that we will need to have it within the legislative framework. And absolutely, we have gone that way. So we have had assistance, and it's a good time to recognize Professor Velma Newton and uh, the assistance we got from Impacts in drafting the hospital authorities legislation. The final draft of the hospital authority legislation will be ready shortly. Bills to be taken to Parliament in September include the Hospital Authority Bill, the Medical Professionals Bill, the Nursing Professionals Bill, the Pharmacy and Allied Health Bill. In other developments, the union representing Leat employees here says some employees are still engaged despite the COVID-19 pandemic and plans for the liquidation of the airline. 22 local employees of regional airline Liat will be affected by the shutting down of the airline. The unions want to ensure that Liat employees receive all the benefits due to them. We are still having a situation where some workers continue to work. Those that are retained for dealing with um, cargo, 
uh, those are written that um, you have some people coming on, on charters uh, and the like. So these continue to be employed. Uh, what I found out is that they were paid up to April. So May and June is going to be due to them. And then afterwards, you would have to make a computation as to the quantum that they will get. And that again is based on their length of service. Now, if you are 22 years, as you have situations that quite a bit of Liat staff are nearing that amount and sometimes over, for 22 years service, you'll get 52 weeks pay. So um, all of that have got to be computed and compiled so that we could know, let's say from Dominica, what is the quantum that uh, Liat will have to pay to the workers. And that would have to be replicated in all of the other islands so that if Liat could know the total quantum that they would have to ensure that they have to be able to pay the workers uh, for their service. Because the workers really in Liat have been remarkable. Um, it is not the first time that Liat workers have contributed to Liat. Uh, they have gone as far as taking a 10% cut just to ensure that Liat continues to operate. And so it will not be fair to them now that Liat is going to be wound up that you are now going to ask them to make an additional sacrifice in terms of payment um, at a reduced uh, amount that is due to them. And so from our standpoint, we would want the workers to get every last cent that is due to them um, since they had no control over the question of the winding up or the liquidation of Liat. You are watching the Channel 5 News. Stay tuned for more after the break. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With flow, it only gets better. Welcome back. The Minister for National Security has called on law-abiding Haitians in Dominica to work with law enforcement to stamp out human trafficking. Mr. Blackmore says leaders of neighboring countries are complaining about the illegal trafficking of Haitian nationals from Dominica. In the main, Haitians are hardworking people, and most of them are law-abiding citizens of Dominica, or residents of Dominica, so to speak. So I'm calling on you to actually work with the, with the police and the Ministry of Home Affairs to bring an end to this madness. Because I can say to you that the leaders of, this, of the various countries have been calling and expressing the disgust. So we have a responsibility, a collective responsibility as Dominicans, as community and to actually help in bringing an end to this um, illegal and un-Dominican act. Police Chief Daniel Carbon says fighting the challenge of Haitian trafficking is not new for law enforcement. He says those involved in human trafficking are not only the average street criminals and the activity is very well organized. In 2006, I can say as a matter of fact, I was the investigator then in that matter. In 2006, thereabout, 
I investigated an incident which resulted in the lives of about 50 to 60 Haitians, and also including some, some Cubans who left Dominica illegally and perished at sea. Uh, unfortunately, so the, the captain and the other crew member survived, and one crew member perished. Uh, the evidence was not forthcoming, and so they could not have been charged. But we've, we've, been, we've been having task force assigned, assigned to dealing with illegal migration from Dominica and also coming in illegally. We've been doing our patrols on the beach. We've been doing aggressive patrols on the beach. And it has been more intense since the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic. But we cannot do it alone. The police cannot do it alone. That, 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 that is an illegal activity that is, that is well organized. I can take the liberty to say, as a, as a matter of fact, it, it's, it's not only the the hard-done criminal on the streets who are involved in that activity. It is well organized. The lack of full membership at meetings among the challenges facing the Welfare and Relief Supply Subcommittee for the 2020 hurricane season. Julian Morris tells us more. The Welfare and Relief Supply Subcommittee comprises over 18 entities from governmental and non-governmental organizations. The committee is responsible for determining how many people in each village is to be fed in the event of a disaster. Another of its responsibilities is the moving the elderly, disabled and vulnerable individuals to safer locations if needs be. Chairman of the Welfare and Relief Supplies Subcommittee, who is also the Chief Welfare Officer Leroy Morvan, says one of the difficulties so far is getting committee members to meet and finalize their plan for the 2020 hurricane season. Calling meetings was one of my issues because you know sometimes you would set up a meeting virtually and you cannot get everybody to attend to the meeting. Um, even the contact numbers of persons have changed so you couldn't get people via the contact number or the um, email addresses and so on. So one of the things that I did was um, I wrote letters to all the members because even those who would be available for the meetings, I would still wrote them, you know, as, as a general letter to everybody on the committee, requesting of them to indicate if they are still interested in being members of the committee and so on. So now that I have all the contact numbers, if we have to hold any virtual meeting, then it will be much easier for me. But that was one of my, my challenge. Another of the concerns which had smoothed out over time was the initial teething problems of relief supply distribution following natural disasters. In terms of reaching the people who really needed the assistance, because normally what would have to happen is um, the, the committee in the all districts, there are, there are disaster subcommittees in the all districts, would normally have to get information across to the Welfare and Relief Supply Subcommittee and say, hey, um, this committee, there are 20 persons who need, need to be fed. And then we in turn would have to send that information across to the um, general food and general supplies. And they would break the material in bulk. And then we again would have to see to it that it is transported to the community, the community via the transports that are made necessary. Channel 5 News was informed that there had always been sufficient supply of relief items to be distributed among those in need. There was never shortage of supply. In my, in my opinion, there was never shortage of supply. As a matter of fact, there was too much. Mm -hmm. because, because I'm saying that because, um, you know, whenever there's a disaster, there's always a cut-off point where um, people get relief. And relief went on for more than three times the, 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 the length of time it would have normally. Well, that's my opinion, eh? and I think that is true. Yes. So, and and to the extent where people, some people started believing that they had to depend on that all the time. And you know what they say: if it sounds too good to be true, then it probably is. That's a fitting description for the most recent scam disguised as the blessing loom. From what we are learning, it is more of a curse than a blessing. 
what might seem as a harmless way to earn a quick buck could end up costing you in the long run. At some point, the system collapses and people will lose money. How does it work? You're not really earning money in the legitimate sense. It is like borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. And it is all across the United States. And you are not just losing money. This thing is illegal. It is a pyramid scheme. If you see a post on social media asking you to participate in a money exchange, just say no. you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up, switch to Flow. It only gets better. To end the news, the headlines again. Pishle Disaster Management Committee concerned the village is not adequately prepared for the 2020 hurricane season. 1st January 2021, the target date to implement new management structure at the Dominica China Friendship Hospital. And an appeal to law abiding Haitians to help the police stop human trafficking. Feel free to access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Andrea Louis, and to all of our viewers around the world, thank you so much for watching. Join us tomorrow.